Super simple, time-saving, quick tips for beginners in DaVinci Resolve 18. Way! Because we all know that starting any new system can be frustrating and DaVinci Resolve is no different. But it doesn't have to. With these quick tips and maybe an effect or two from this video sponsor, Motion VFX, you'll be whizzing through projects in no time. And we're going to start off setting your project setting default and custom presets. When you open DaVinci Resolve, the first thing you should be doing is coming down to the bottom right hand corner, clicking on the little cog to open up your project settings. And then within master settings, setting your timeline resolution and your timeline frame rate, plus anything else that you need. Now, you don't actually need to do this every single time because you can set a default. So mine here, timeline resolution is ultra HD. I'm just gonna change this to 1080p. I'm gonna keep it as 30 frames per second. If I want this to be the default, so the standard one that loads every time we boot into DaVinci Resolve, we simply click on the three little dots, top right hand corner, go to set current settings as default preset. It'll ask me if I want to update, I'll click update. And that's it. Every time we open DaVinci Resolve, these settings will appear. Now, obviously that's not always what you want, so then you can also set presets. From this little menu on the left, you can see presets at the top. What you want to do, while in the master settings, set your timeline resolution and your frame rate to whatever you want it to be. So I'm just gonna go with 4K 25 for this example. Then we're gonna click on presets. What we need to do first of all is hit save. That'll just save any settings that you've just changed to make sure that they're ready to go. And then we hit save as, give it a name. I'm gonna call this 4K 25 and then okay. And that'll save that preset within the preset. So at any time we can give it a click load that in and that'll load the 4K25 to our current project. Simple, way easier than messing around with your project settings every single time. Next up, importing media. Now I know this sounds obvious, but there's actually a couple of useful little tricks to show you here as well. So we're on the edit page and I've got my media pool open over here. Now you probably know that if you right click, you can go to import media, find any footage and just import it as you need to. But you can also drag and drop. So I've got this folder here and I can grab anything, I can highlight it, simply drag it in and it will copy it to DaVinci Resolve. But you can actually do the entire folder structure as well. So I'm gonna go back one level. I'm gonna grab this laptop folder and I'm gonna just drag it in. But rather than dropping it here within the media pool, we're gonna drop it over to here on the little shelf on the left. And what that's gonna do is import all of the footage. So we've got our main laptop folder with everything within there, but then also import any folders. It will copy the folder structure from Windows or Mac or whatever you're using and create bins within your media pool within DaVinci Resolve. So it just makes life a little bit easier. Now this isn't actually linked to the folder on your operating system. So if I go and change it within Windows, it won't reflect within here, but it's just a real nice way of staying organized. Now a real quick bonus tip for anyone that uses the media page, which is down here, if we give that a click, you've got this media storage, which is actually quite handy. So you can browse to all of your different drives on your PC and then find the files that you want. But there's another quick tip here as well. Once again, if I grab any folder, let's use a different one this time, I've got this source tape folder. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag it into this main area here within the media page. What it's actually gonna do is just really quickly drill into that folder. So you can see it's gone to my D drive, resolve, media, source tape, and I've got everything within there. So rather than having to navigate through the drives manually, grab any folder, drop it in there, it'll take you directly to the right place, and off you go. Simple. Whether you import on the edit page or use the media page is entirely up to you, but there's two options for you anyway. Next up, duplicating timelines and also really quickly changing a timeline to a portrait timeline for social media. So I've created this timeline here and as you can see, it's a standard 16 by nine timeline. Now there's something really handy you can do. If you find your timeline within your media pool, so you can see mine here is called timeline one, and we've got the different icon. If we right click at any time, we can go to duplicate timeline. This is really handy if you wanna do some crazy editing, you wanna customize things, do some trial and error, but know that at any point you can just jump over to this copy and you've got everything there ready to go. Now this is also really useful if you're trying to repurpose your content for social media, you're trying to switch it over to a portrait resolution, for example. So I've got my timeline one. I've now got my timeline one copy. I'm gonna rename this. You can do that really quickly just by double clicking within the media pool. I'm just gonna call this one portrait. Now, rather than messing with resolutions and all that sort of stuff, if you hop over to the cut page, and then in the top right hand corner, you've got this little icon, give that a click and you can simply change it to portrait and it will switch this current timeline, the copy we've just made, really quickly to a portrait timeline. We can then hop back to the edit page and we can just edit it in portrait mode, so it's ready to go. Now, you've probably noticed a problem with that, and that's the fact the video isn't scaled. 
the video is teeny in the portrait window. But again, there's a quick fix for that as well. That's my next tip, scaling. Back in the edit page, if you click on any piece of footage on your timeline, open up the inspector, top right hand corner, scroll down until you get to this retime and scaling and you've got scaling within here. Now by default, it will say project settings. If we click the little drop down, we've got crop, fit, fill and stretch. If we change it to crop, what it will do is zoom all the way in and crop it so then that it fits the frame, it fits our portrait frame. We can then simply change the position left and right to get it in the exact place. It's a nice handy way of zooming things in automatically so you don't need to mess around with the zoom levels, you just need to change the position. But that's obviously on a clip by clip basis and we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do, change this back to project settings. The easiest method, once again, find that timeline within your media pool. So I've got my portrait one here. I'm going to right click, timelines, timeline settings and the timeline settings will appear here. We've got mismatched resolution at the bottom and it says scale entire image. Change that to scale full frame with crop. Click on OK. And now anything that you put on this timeline will be automatically zoomed in fully like so. Then you just want to go through changing the position so that everything lines up and job done. Way easier than manually zooming everything in on your own. Next up, titles. You can save your own title presets in DaVinci Resolve. It's not immediately obvious, but it's also not actually that confusing to do once you get the hang of it. So we're back on the edit page. I'm going to open up the effects library, top left hand corner, come down to titles, and we're going to grab one of these fusion titles. Let's just go with this center reveal. We'll drop it on our timeline like so. And now we've got this simple text animation. If we give it a click in the inspector, under the video title area, we've got all of the controls within here. So I'm going to change this to say Mr. Alex Tech, and I can change the font if I want to. Let's change it to something a bit nicer, maybe a bit bigger, change the tracking, change the color, do all the things that you'd like to do to this title, and then we can save it as a preset. Within the inspector, at the top, you've got this little magic wand icon. Give that a click, and you'll be taken straight into Fusion. Now, if you're not used to Fusion, don't worry, we're not gonna do too much work here. We just need to do a few quick, simple things. At the bottom, you've got your node, center reveal. If you give it a click, open the inspector, you'll see all of the controls within here, the same ones you've just seen, so you can go and make any amendments if you need to. Once you're happy, right click on your node, go to settings, and then go to save as. Now find the location on your PC. It can be literally any location on your computer that's easy to access. So I'm just gonna save this onto a random folder on my desktop. I've got file name, I'm gonna change this, it's important that you do that. So I'm just gonna put Mr. Alex Tech Center Reveal, that will do, and then hit save. Then you'll be taken back into Fusion. What you need to do, open up the effects library, top left hand corner, expand template, expand edit, and then click on titles. Now you'll see all of the same titles that you're used to seeing within here. Then you need to open that folder just outside of DaVinci Resolve. So I've opened this up in my Windows Explorer. I'm going to grab this .settings file and I'm just going to drag it and drop it on this big list of titles here. I can then get rid of this folder and that's it. If I go back to the edit page now, go back to my titles. In my Fusion titles, I'll go to my M's because I called it Mr. Alex Tech. And you can now see we've got a Mr. Alex Tech center reveal. I can just drag that, pop it on my timeline put my playhead over it, hit play, and we've got Mr. Alex Tech. And it'll pull through any of the settings which you amended before you save that dot settings file. Simple way of creating as many little title presets as you like. But what if you don't like any of the default titles and transitions and effects in DaVinci Resolve 18? Well, that's where Motion VFX come in. If I open up my effects library, expand titles, I've got a motion VFX folder. And if I expand that, I've got a bunch of really awesome templates within here. Each of these are really simple to use. I can open the folder, grab whatever I want, drag it onto my timeline, give it a click, customize all of the content within the inspector, and it's good to go. If you go back and look at basically any of my videos over the past 12 months, you're bound to see a transition effect or title that's from Motion VFX, because I use them all the time and they're a massive time saver. You've got a whole selection. They've got awesome title packs like the M Title Real Style Pack, which contains 65 individual versatile presets. The M Tuber 3 Pack, which is perfect for any of you YouTubers out there, which contains 72 time-saving visual tools like completely custom customizable calls to action, corner screens, intros, titles, and social media icons. Even fully tracked callouts in their recently released M Callouts Simple 2 pack. Everything is automatically installed and updated thanks to that M installer tool as well, which just saves you 
even more time. So if you fancy checking them out for yourself, there's a link down in the description below and you can use the code MrAlexTech15 to get 15% off everything in store. Winner. Next up, power bins. Power bins are folders which are shared amongst all of your projects. Any future projects you create and any old ones you go back into, if you've got a power bin set up, you can share stuff between them. To turn them on, simply go to view, come on all the way down until you see show power bins and then give that a click. And then within your media pool, you'll see power bins and by default, you'll just have a master folder. Now within here, you can drop all sorts of things. I can grab this title we've just created, pop that in there and now I've got this sensory reel that's ready to drop out from any future project. We could put videos, photos, all sorts of stuff within here. Now the thing to remember with this, when you're putting things into power bins, so if I put this video in there like so, we need to make sure that this file doesn't move from our actual PC. It needs to remain in the same location. These things aren't stored within DaVinci Resolve, it's simply linking to the file on your PC. So just bear that in mind. Power bins are an awesome little time saver if there's lots of elements you use in lots and lots of projects. Particularly for me, things like PNGs, logos, all that sort of fun stuff. Next up, adjustment clips. If you've never used adjustment clips, why not? They're awesome, you should be using them. Here's a couple of reasons why. If you open up the effects library, come on down to effects. At the very, very top, you've got an adjustment clip. Just give it a click, drag it onto your timeline like so. Now by default, it won't actually do anything, so it doesn't look like it's done much at all. But what an adjustment clip does is it affects everything underneath. So if I grab this adjustment clip and I zoom in, you can see my footage is zooming in. If I move my adjustment clip out of the way, it's going to zoom back out. That zoom will only occur wherever this adjustment clip lies. So it can be really, really useful for adjusting multiple things on your timeline at once. As long as you put an adjustment clip above it, you're good to go. Now a couple of really great examples of this, let me grab an adjustment clip and we'll put it on my timeline like so. If we give it a click in the inspector, all we're going to do is just zoom in a little bit like so. Now wherever this adjustment clip is, we'll have a real simple snap zoom in like so and then as soon as that adjustment clip finishes, it'll zoom back out. So you can do snap zooms really quickly and easily. If you want to duplicate this along your timeline, give it a click, hold the alt key on your keyboard or option if you're on Mac Keeping that held, click and drag, and you can make as many duplicates as you like, putting these snap zooms all along your timeline, really quick and easy, rather than having to mess around with the zoom settings every single time. Now let's move across the timeline. Another great example, let's grab an adjustment clip, new one, we'll put this on here and we'll lengthen this out. If you're trying to do some cinematic black bars, that letterbox look in a very particular part of your timeline, use an adjustment clip. So I've put this new one here, in the inspector once again, this time I'm going to go to cropping and all we're going to do is simply crop the top of it, crop the bottom about the same amount and now we've got these cinematic cropped letterboxing black bars. And again, wherever this adjustment clip lies, it will put those black bars, that crop on everything underneath so you can move it around, delete it if you don't like it, it's real quick and easy. Now if you want to save these adjustment clips, you can save them to those power bins we discussed a moment ago. So give this adjustment clip a click. In the inspector, far right you've got file give that a click and then within here you've got a name so I'm going to call this one black bars like so then we simply open up our power bin drag our black bars adjustment clip within there and now it sits within there black bars and then any project in the future we want it we can just grab it plonk it on the timeline and we've got our cinematic crop simple easy fast time saving Easy peasy. Now at this point, you're probably ready to start delivering your clips as well. Fortunately, I've got two real quick tips for the deliver page as well. And my first one, creating custom export presets. I'm here on the deliver page. You can start from anywhere. So I could go to the H.264 or 265 master. I always use 265, so I'm gonna give that a click. And then I just need to change the format to whatever I need it to be. So let's say I wanted an MP4, 265, with the encoder NVIDIA, which is generally what I use to upload my YouTube videos. Change everything else if I need to, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. Then we simply come up to this top little three dots right here, give that a click, and we can save as a new preset. Give this a name, 265 NVIDIA, and then click on OK. And on the far left of this list, I've got 265 NVIDIA, and at any point, I give it a click. It loads through all of my custom settings, add to the render queue, and it's good to go. If you've got more than one preset, you get this little drop down arrow, you give that a click, you have your multiple options within there, you just select whichever one you want, add to the render queue, and off you go. Now last but not least, did you know you could render off multiple projects in one go using your render queue? 
So I'm gonna add this project to my render queue, like so. But then rather than hitting render all, we're actually just gonna open up the project manager, the little house in the bottom right hand corner, and open up a different project. Now I've got some footage from this one. I'm also gonna add this to the render queue. So now I've got these two projects lined up, which I want to render in one big go. At the top of the render queue, you've got these three little dots. Give that a click and then click on show all projects. And then anything that you've got set up to render will appear within your render queue. You can either click them individually and then just render either one or two, like so. Or if you make sure that neither of them are selected or all of them are selected, up to you, you'll see the option says render all. We give that a click. It will go through each one sequentially, just churning them out so that you can go put the kettle on and everything will be rendered when you get back. And that's it. Don't forget to check out Motion VFX using the link down below. And don't forget to use the code MrAlexTech15 for your 15% off. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.